Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a new video. This is a video about just finishing up kind of the Racing Rival stream from yesterday. When I ended the stream yesterday, I couldn't figure out how to repackage the Unity 3D web-based files. And literally minutes after I ended the stream, I realized, wait, let me look at the different versions of Disunity and see if the old versions of the tool have anything the new version doesn't. Lo and behold, the old versions actually had some more features that the new one doesn't. So for some odd reason, in Disunity 0.34, I think is what this is, um, yes, it doesn't support newer versions of Unity. Anything below uh, 5.0 is all it supports, which is perfect for Racing Rivals, as it's version 4.5.0. Uh, on the Unity engine side of things. Basically, now that means I can actually go in and I can modify this. And the best way to figure out what version of Unity your asset file is using is to open it with a hex editor and look at the first few bytes of data. So as you can see in here, it's Unity Web 3X, which is the actual Unity player, and then 4.5.0 F5 is the version of Unity 3D that the file was actually created on which means now this can actually be opened up and extracted and I'm going to explain how to do that so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to need to get this unity 0.34 and all that I'll leave I'm making uh, my own tool version of this for racing rivals specifically um, so you know maybe in the future you guys will see something new from me for that but you want to do this unity if I could spell disunity.bat and then there's two different types of extraction and that's what I'm going to show you is just extraction and then file ex uh, bundle extraction so regular um, extraction is going to actually get you all the image files the splash screens the textures the icons for the car menus and stuff like that that's going to get you all that stuff so for that you just do extract asset that Unity 3D. And as you can see, I do have multiple of the same Unity file. That is due to me actually testing this, making sure it works, and um, actually doing something that updated something on the inside of it. But um, the other reason is this tool actually auto creates folders of the files that match the name of the actual Unity 3D file to make it easier. Eventually, I'm going to try to veer away from that. I'm going to try to make it so you can select whatever files you wanted, wherever they are, things like that. But I think for now, this is very simple. So you simply want to hit enter. Hit enter, you son of a biscuit. And as you can see, it's going to extract and convert all these shared asset files from like the resources and stuff like that. And here you go. This is where your audio files are going to be. I think this works. Yeah, here's your main melody from the old game. Complete lossless quality too. If anybody wants that, let me know. Um, the NOS sound effects, all the tire stuff. Win upbeat V2. Uh, okay. These are some old sound effects, man. And then you go in, you can also find the fonts, which these are really nice to have because then you can install the custom fonts from Racing Rivals and actually have the exact same stuff that the game used. Um, and then the mesh, this is like uh, just some object files. The shaders, this is stuff that you can actually, if you like the look of 7.0 and you want that look in like 4. Point whatever, whatever, this is where you would replace shaders and stuff like that, and you would be able to actually make the game look better by modifying these. I'm pretty sure you can just modify them with, uh, whatchamacallit, Notepad++, but there is a shader editor out there. I forget what it's called, um, but you can modify them that way. And then text, I don't, these are uh, text assets. This is like strings and stuff like that, so you could actually change like the entire storyline of the game. I don't know what this one is because I see this all the time, but it's 
all jumbled and gross. It has the beginning bites of ADM2. And I have to look that up and see what that is. Let me close that. But as you can see, it has all the strings and stuff like that for the entire game. So you could actually modify any of the text in the game as well, which would be really cool. And then these are textures. I don't have a way to open up TGA or DDS on my computer, so you'll just have to take my word for it. And then this is just the Unity Extra stuff. So that's going to be your main assets and some other shader stuff. But that's just your main assets from inside the Unity file. So you want the DLLs as well. That's really easy to get. This unity dot bat bundle extract. Um, oh yeah, web dot unity three D. So now this is going to extract the actual like DLL files and stuff like that. And from here you can actually replace these. So as you can see here, this is the old uh, the old file. And this was the one that I actually used for testing, which, as you can see, if I go, let me rename this real quick. I'll do assets one, because I don't want to accidentally mess something up here just by accident without thinking while on a video. Disunity dot bat assets one oh. Bundle extract assets one dot unity three D. So that's gonna make the assets one folder. And as you can see, it actually has my updated uh DLL file in it. This is the updated one where I changed the URLs just to make sure it would work. And as you can see, those are now in there which is really nice, but I can actually inject almost anything I want into these web files. But as you can see, different file size, different DLL. So if you want to re-inject your DLL, inject a different one, you do disunity.bat bundle inject assembly C sharp DLL web Unity 3D. From there, it's going to import it or inject it. And this is the old one. This is the new one. It's just it's going to compress it, make sure that it's the smallest amount. Because basically, these are just fancy zip files that they change the first couple bytes, so you can't do it with like a that kind of thing. But as you can see right here, this is Unity Web. I don't know if I can inject files that aren't already there. So like if I wanted to, for example, add the missing DLL files, which you need these DLL files if you want to go in and modify this stuff. So we'll paste these in here. So these are the missing DLL files from the uh, actual web file. If you went in and tried to modify this stuff, you actually can't. It will not let you. So if I close this, for example, I'll show you. So now if I want to modify this, I take this DLL, open it up in DNSpy or .NET Reflector, and Oh my god, I learned this live on stream yesterday. DNSpy is so much better than .NET Reflector. Look how pretty this looks. <laughs> I mean, I've used DNSpy before, but it was back when it was terrible. Um, and I didn't like it then, so I didn't use it. So let's say I want to add auto launch. I can just go, like, edit class. And then I can do this dot get
this dot race controls view dot button gas pedal down true this dot race controls view dot button nos down true there we go we added auto launch into the apk or into the web version of racing rivals i just simply save this with save all or something like that and i can actually inject it back in so i go i still haven't quite figured out the end spy but you go save module save it wherever you want it to save i always add a one to it it's going to save it and now we could inject that back in very easily so what you have to do is i do have a backup of that obviously so i'm going to delete that rename this and then from here since i've modified it more Yes, you can go disunity.bat bundle inject. I'm pretty sure it's going to look for the one in web, but I'm going to change the name of this just in case. Bundle inject web slash assembly t sharp dot dll into web.unity 3D. There we go. Now it's injecting it into the proper Unity 3D file. So you'll see a size difference in the file, and we'll go from there. And that's actually how you compile, you decompile and compile modified code on a web-based Unity 3D file. So as you can see here, it extra it uh, converted it just fine. The modified thing is in there actually we'll go with this i am going to make another video in the future on how to do textures and assets but i don't have a tool on my computer that can open up dds files and this splash screen is a dds file um so i can't modify that on my own today but eventually um i have a guy who's very much interested in helping us out and getting at least an idea set up where it's going to run locally um, and have the actual responses, you know, proper. So putting in the URLs for Racing Rivals 7.3.0 to their server right now, very pointless because the code is so different now that the actual game doesn't know how to communicate with the new server. But this is actually working. This is how you modify a web-based Unity 3D file. And I wanted to make this video and I wanted to figure this out because the guys over at the Flashpoint um, Discord channel uh, didn't realize you can actually repack these. Somebody um, over there told me that they didn't know how to do this and I knew there was a way, I knew I'd figure it out. Whenever I put my mind to something, I figure it out. You guys know this. <laughs> Thanks to auto launch and stuff like that and Racing Rivals years back. This is how you do it. It's that simple. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out. Oh, and since I'm uploading this on Thanksgiving, all y'all United States peoples, happy Thanksgiving.